Welcome to the Invincible Food Network. We're just starting to make dinner, and as usual, it is 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> Tonight we'll be making James' famous tuna, some purple mashed potatoes, and spinach, and maybe cranberry sauce if we remember. So here's James to start things off with this special tuna marinade. Right, well, uh, for the marinade, I, I like to use a flat bottomed Rubbermaid dish, uh, brand doesn't matter. Something with a lid is good so that you can seal it when you're done marinating it. And the two essential essential ingredients are uh, Bragg's liquid aminos. Make it a dirty bottle if you can. Yeah, well this it shows that we use it a lot. And uh, pure maple syrup. If you can't find Bragg's in your local supermarket, uh, low sodium uh, soy sauce will work this fine. So that's about half a cup of each. <laughs> uh, we'll cut this part out. Now I got it. All right. So we got our. Oh, is that about a half a cup? Yep. About How many glasses of wine are you adding to this? Um, I'm adding two glasses of wine, but indirectly. None of them are actually going in the marinade. They're going in our bellies. Mm. Garlic clove. Just stick it through the press. Did you not take the peel off? I pre-peeled it. This is the magic of amateur video. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know you don't have to peel it when you use a press like that. I know, but old habits die hard. Okay, and you can just kick the rest of this in too, because it really doesn't matter and it's not going... It's just uh, being put in the marinade with everything else. Okay. What? Oh. Yeah, you're getting uh, color commentary from the cats. I appreciate that. All right. Um, we also want to add a about a tablespoon, maybe a little less, of prepared horseradish. Um, why not use pre-prepared? I mean, unprepared. <laughs> well, if you used unprepared horseradish, it would be this little radish root thing. And then you'd have to grate it and mash it, and this way it's just a whole lot easier. You're not a foodie at all. No. <laughs> and uh, about a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, just for mm. a little bit of. Um, what do you think, Grim? Meow. Yum diddly umness. Give it a good stir. I think Grim wants this next ingredient. What do you think? Yes, we have our fresh Hawaiian ahi filet, number one grade. <laughs> Does that mean you can eat it raw? That means you can eat it raw. Mmm. Look at how good that is. Meaty. Looks. Here's where yes. we slice in the video of the tuna swimming by from yeah. So yeah. Monterey about, Bay Aquarium. That looks about the right thickness. Mm. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to cut it any thinner than that. It's bloody. Mm, it's not that bloody. Mm. Don't forget to drop it on the counter. It adds uh, special seasoning. Yeah, special seasoning involving cat hair and such. So James, how long do you marinate that for? Well, tuna is pretty porous. And, uh, or maybe it's not porous. I really don't know. It doesn't marinate the same as beef or chicken. Um, I like to let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes. And, uh, so put the lid on it, stick it away so the cats don't get it, and then let's move on. Alright, where do you stick it? The fridge? Don't answer that. Okay, let's move on to our next section, which is what? Potatoes? Get my hands. Uh, Alright, that's boring. Okay, Grim, anything to say? 
All right, and the next portion of our fine cuisine this evening is going to be what are those? Uh, yeah, these are purple potatoes uh, that we got delivered from our CSA. Although, actually, is it a CSA? It's like a... I don't know. I don't know if it's technically a CSA. It's a... Uh, I think it is. If the C maybe Planet stood for Organic. cooperative. It's a corporate cooperative. I don't know. Yeah. It's pretty cool. They deliver stuff. And um, we've never had purple potatoes delivered to our door, but um, we have had purple mashed potatoes at a restaurant, and they were quite good. So uh, number one rule of being a foodie, or so I'm told, is uh, to take whatever ingredients come your way and make something undeniably fancy from them. So that's what we're trying to do here. I think, I think we've hit the nail on the proverbial head with these ultra fancy potatoes. Just, yeah, I don't know. The only just thing is look gonna... at how Ooh, purple those are. Pretty. Those are amazing. I think this is going to stay in my hands, which will be fun. So, um, sure. yeah, they're really pretty. And um, the only thing is they're kind of a bitch to peel. Kind of small. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on here. Touch small. I'm about to peel my own thumb off. Hmm. I do have small fingers, so... It's well, it should be easier for you because they're bigger in your hands You'd than they would that, be. You'd think that, wouldn't you? I don't know what's going on here. Oh, and of course I forgot my own number one rule. And that would be... Um, well, when you're about to... Well, my hair is kind of purple right now, so I guess it doesn't matter. When you're about to engage in experiments... Go ahead, put your hair back. Right, right, right. I had already put my hair back, so I had forgotten about you. that. Alright, so we have a little hair in our food. And uh, basically, you just peel and peel, and every so often you get sick of peeling. So, are you almost done there? I am at least a tenth of the way through here. Yes. Yes, we're very, very close to being finished. I'm on my way, so keep recording. It's any moment. Yeah, any moment. Any moment you'll be done. It's like they died. Uh, Throw that one out. No. <laughs> I don't know what they're supposed I think to look like. I'll just keep feeling. This sucks. Hey, do you want to feel? <laughs> now, normally we buy bagged spinach. Uh, but it's important if you want to saute spinach like we want to do to buy uh, large spinach and not baby spinach because the baby spinach kind of turns into mush uh, while you're cooking it. So we are going to saute some spinach for dinner, which we often do, uh, unlike the purple potatoes, which are a big question mark. Uh, these will probably turn out just fine. What are you doing? Hey, actually, look, you know, the uh, purple potatoes are a big question mark. Uh, you want to rinse the spinach unless you like the taste of sand specifically. Uh, it comes pretty dirty when it's just in a bunch, but we've been rinsing this for oh, we've been rinsing this for two or three minutes now, so it's probably been getting pretty close to done. It doesn't feel very gritty anymore. I can the the leaves have a nice you know squeaky kind of feeling. To Shut up, you freaking foodie. Yeah, so then you want to let it dry. Our food show brought to you by Cat Boxing. If you've got cats, it's the best kind of boxing there is. What are you doing with that knife? <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is chop up the purple potatoes. Um, just chop them up. Well, um, they're I guess, pretty small. I guess they're pretty small. And the point of the food show is to tell you um, how to cook your food, right? So, okay, friends and neighbors who do not know how to make mashed potatoes, <laughs> chop these up in kind of small bits, but not teeny tiny. Is that about small enough? That looks about right. We're 
We'll cook them for a while. We'll yeah. hopefully cook all the way through. Um, most of these are pretty small. In fact, I, I don't think these were really intended to be um, peeled. Um, but, you know, that's how we are. We, we like to do things the difficult way. So we're right. just going to get these chopped up and uh, we will uh, then cover them with some water and throw in a little salt. Throw in a little salt. Cook them for probably, we'll try 15 minutes and we'll see how that goes. We'll test them after 15 minutes and uh, then we'll have to reevaluate because we've never actually cooked these before. So. Yeah, the purple potatoes are kind of a mystery. Um, in more ways than one, how do they get to be purple anyway? I'm really curious. Um, I think they're just born that way because, you know, potatoes originated in Peru. Oh, I thought they were Irish. They were brought over. Yeah, actually, I guess I knew that because um, I am Irish. We know these things. Yeah, so the inherent Irish knowledge. That... That's right. So I think we've successfully stained our cutting board. It's pretty, though. I'm kind of wondering if we uh, put some of this stuff on our face, if it would stain it as well. That would be interesting, kind of like woad. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, we would be all set to be Scottish warriors. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. With our purple potato faces. Except we hate the Scottish. <laughs> oh, they're not all wankers. Alright. So that's about it. Um, chop up the potatoes and cover them with some pure water. Very important. Filtered water. Yeah. And all this? Mm-hmm. Some sea salt in a uh, be gratuitous if you wish because uh, the potatoes soak up the salt in the cold water as you heat them to boil. And that makes it go faster. Turn it up to high, let it boil, put on your um, timer, very important, especially if you're drinking wine while you make dinner. Put on your timer for 13 minutes and check it at that point. On to the next thing. Okay, so uh, we've rinsed the spinach. It's drying. We're going to prepare some garlic for the spinach. So I like to use lots of garlic in our lemon and garlic spinach. Other folks like to use not so much. Um, it's all a matter of personal taste. Uh, what I'm going to do is two fairly large cloves for the amount of spinach we have. You know what else garlic is used for? Treating yeast infections. <laughs> okay, so got our garlic. Nice clean cutting board. We wiped out our whole surfaces. We washed the knife. We're ready to go. Give it a good smush. Get it a little flat. And then dice. James, you're a little bit, uh perfectionist with your garlic chopping, aren't you? I just like nicely chopped garlic. And when you're done, you make a little garlic pyramid. Then chop it. Okay, that's looking good. Let's, uh, let's get into the pan and get it ready because the secret to good sautéed spinach and garlic is to start the garlic first. Then take and squeeze your juice from one lemon in here. It's very handy to have a little sieve so that none of the uh, pulpy bits or the seeds get down in with your spinach because it's hard to determine what's a little pulpy bit of lemon and what's a uh, piece of garlic. Oh, just a little sploosh of olive oil. Get that breast cancer olive oil if you can. Breast cancer olive oil. A dollar fifty from the sale of this bottle will go to the Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Foundation. Okay. Start up your engines. Hmm. Our stove doesn't work so well sometimes, but we make do. So. Heat it pretty much on high. Not for very long though, just for 
a minute, just until the lemon juice starts to give off some steam it's and start to bubble. See the, the steam is starting to come off it. The, I think we should turn it off now. I think we should turn it off in about five seconds. I think we should turn it off now. Well, I think that we can just continue this discussion until it's actually time to turn it off. I think we need to turn it off now. See? Now is when we Now! Turn it off. That's what I said. <laughs> so, you just turn it off and set it aside for right now. We're not uh, going to cook the spinach until last. I sure hope it doesn't burn. Believe me, it won't. Mm. They are bubbling, but I don't know how uh, tasty they'll be, so let me try. You're not done yet! I'm going to try them! You're not done yet! But I'm going to try them, and that's the only way we can know! Okay. You see, Rin's philosophy of cooking is not to taste anything, not to try anything, and just to throw stuff in whenever she feels like it. Sometimes this works, sometimes not so much. The potatoes need two more minutes. What James doesn't know is that we've secretly replaced his purple potatoes with radishes. They will never be cooked. Are you saying they're done or they're not done? The potatoes are done. They're ready to be pulled out of the boiling water and put into a bowl so that they can be mashed up. <laughs> Sweet! James is using a dangerous method of draining that I do not approve of. James! Now James is adding the potatoes to a bowl. Can you say bowl? Bowl! Look at those potatoes, all ready to be mashed. So what's the first step? Arrange everything on the stove according to the feng shui of the room. Like so, yes. Even the cutting board. Perfect, yes. Okay, so uh, for the tuna, what we want to do is take your nonstick pan, don't use any oil or anything, and coat the bottom of it with some pepper. Or you could use a stick pan and use oil and yeah, pepper. Yeah, if you used a sticky pan, use some oil. But either way. Now a good sign the food is almost ready is when the cats are lined up in the kitchen, ready to eat even though they don't eat people food. All right, so we're adding pepper to the tuna pan, and we have it turned on, yes? Or turning we're it on about right to. Now. Add as much pepper as you like, but I recommend a lot for this recipe. And our garlic is still awaiting spinach. And with the pepper, we add just a, a dash bit, of sea salt. Just a bit of salt for flavor. All right. Okay, and then turn the heat up. on pretty high. Get it going till you start sneezing, right? Is that the rule? That's pretty much what you need to do. Yeah, you want to make it so that you're starting to get a pepper chemical burn in your throat. Right. Actually, what you're looking for is When you can Trip drop a little, little bit of the marinade, marinade on, mm -hmm. and it starts to do that, That's that pan's probably hot enough. That's the way to go, huh? Yeah, that should do it. Alright. So, on the count of three. Out of one, out of two, out of three. Slap those on there. Well, our tuna, as you can see, starting to have starting to turn gray at the bottom up through into the pink. Looks like it's about time to turn it over. So let's do that. Mm. 
Mm. Okay. Turn it over and we'll turn it down a little bit. The second side doesn't need to be quite as seared as the first side. Should we add some more pepper? Um, you know that I can't stop you. <laughs> Yep, look at all that pepper. Alright, so turn it onto a very low heat. And then James, if you'd like, can you add the spinach? <clears throat> right on. Okay. So we're going to add the spinach to the garlic and olive oil and lemon juice and turn it on pretty low heat. Um, let it simmer down a little bit. It'll wilt a lot and become much smaller. Right, James? That is correct. All of this spinach is really not going to be very much when we're done with it. Oh my god. James. What? There's something in your ear. What are you going to do with them? I'm going to throw in uh, about two tablespoons of butter. And about two tablespoons of sour cream. That's probably a little more than two. That might be three tablespoons. Okay. And we also need some pepper and some salt. And we liberally pepper. Pepper to your own taste. The pepper, it's, it's not a strong flavor in the mashed potatoes. Salt, our empty container of salt. We're going to need more than that, probably. The show business baby deal with it. And then we do the salt dance. La, 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 la. Hmm. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Now. With the aid of our magic friend, the mixer. So I guess technically we're not making mashed potatoes. We're making whipped potatoes. Hmm. Yum. Which I always prefer, the way I was taught to make them. And I was always told they were mashed potatoes, but there are those, perhaps those amongst you, who feel that this is not mashed potatoes, this is whipped potatoes. So then we just kind of shuffling the places. The leaves that were on top are now going to be on the bottom, and vice versa. We're just softly wilting it. A little bit of a sauté, a little soft shoe sauté going on. It's uh, truly a delight. Can you hear the cranberries popping? Mmm, spinach looks just about perfect. Turn it up too high and let that lemon juice boil off a little bit. If it doesn't boil all the way off before we're ready, we'll just scoop the spinach out. Stir in the cranberries. There we go. Keeping them going. All right. And how are those mashed potatoes? They're good. Delicious. You want to like a beater? Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Kitties want to like a beater too. Time to turn off that spinach. Looks pretty good. Maybe a touch on the overdone side, but probably pretty yummy. It's fairly green still, not completely wilted. Yeah, that's still plenty green. That's yeah. good. The tuna looks, tuna looks pretty fantastic. good. Do you want to cut it in half and see how that goes? Sure, let's give it a quick. Still pink in the middle at all? Just vestigially pink. Perfect. Yeah, that's how I like it. But yeah. some people like it a little bit more raw in the middle. I prefer it a little pinker in the middle, but 
this is going to be delicious, so I'm not going to complain. Our meal is done. I think it speaks for itself. We've got some lovely food that the cats are desperately trying to get, and that folks like Ainsley Harriet and Rick Bayless would be proud of. All right, come on, let's eat. Mm.